Hey all, it's Vintage Vinny. Welcome to another thrift store haul. Everything we're going to be looking at today came from a new place that I had never been to before, nor did I even know it existed. I spent $34 on everything you're going to be seeing today. But before I jump in, I do sincerely apologize if you had not seen any content from me. As you all know, last weekend was Easter weekend. On top of that, we all got a little bit of a sinus cold. And um, the weekend... Before Easter, the Saturday before Easter, I had started feeling a little icky, and then after I did my sale, ate some dinner, and relaxed, I started to just get really cold, like I could not warm up, and even under the blankets, I was freezing. So I decided to just do what I had to do, relax, and just get myself better. So I apologize if I worried any of you. But I just needed a little bit of a break mentally from YouTube because I wasn't feeling well on top of being kind of tired. So anywho, that's enough of that. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Folks, this is not even everything. This is just some of the items that I will be sharing with you all. So this set right here, I guess I'll start because this is part of this set. So this is a, I think it's like a console set because we've got candlesticks, we've got a trinket dish, we've got this bowl, and we've got a watering can here. These are all marked Bone China, so I assume they're probably from Japan. Everything looks to be intact. I mean, a couple of the flowers might be broken here or there, but honestly, for this to have survived all these years and, you know, be in the shape that it's in is quite remarkable. This little tin caught my eye. It's got an image of, it looks like an old world village. Almost reminds me of New York. I don't know why, but it just does. And it looks like somebody is selling flowers. There's no markings on the tin. It definitely is older. It's almost like an enamel paint. But I just thought that was really, really cool. We have this brand new, new old stock comb I don't even know how old it is because there's not a zip code or anything on here. Uh, the price was 39 cents, three for 39 cents, probably from a drugstore or something like that. So I'm not exactly sure what I'll do with that. That might go in a live sale for like just a few dollars. This was really interesting. It was in a showcase and I just couldn't leave it behind. I'm not exactly sure if it's a badge of some sort. It's marked on the back, Richard Graver, Westchester, and I know that Westchester is in Pennsylvania, and it's on a patriotic um, ribbon. But that's really interesting. I haven't done my research on that just yet, but I will let you all know if I find anything out about it. I know some of you all have been asking for me to find more owl stuff, and I found this piece. This is a Fenton owl. Uh, branches and it's perched on or the owl is perched onto a branch where did I see the Fenton mark I know it was on here somewhere but I promise you all this is Fenton I did look it up clear glass hashtag bring back the clear glass as Katie would say and if, uh, speaking of owls I also found this it's an owl trinket box no markings on it it's bisque cold painted no damage to it, that's why I went ahead and picked it up. This goes with that stuff, and I shared everything over there. Uh, what else do we got on this table, guys? Sorry, there's just a lot, and I couldn't fit it all onto the table. Oh, we got these little luster salt and pepper shakers. In good condition. So I was excited to find those. I got a razor lot. I usually don't go for the razors if they're not the Gillette Fat Boys, but sometimes these ones can do pretty well. Uh, I will have to clean it up. I think I might go to Walmart maybe tomorrow and pick up a Sonic Cleaner. That way I don't have to keep borrowing my dad's. And I'll find out what this one is. It's gooped up and such. Never ever take a steel, um, or like, what do they call those? Steel wool or a wire brush to these, that's what I was saying, because you'll take the uh, chrome finish off. So always put these in a sonic cleaner. My dad will do scrubbing bubbles. He'll take the foaming scrubbing bubbles cleaner 
and he'll spray it on here first and then he'll put it into the sonic cleaner with water to get all the soap scum and stuff off because it works wonders and you can get scrubbing bubbles for next to nothing and these i'm not sure if anybody would be interested in them they're, they're pretty mass produced they would just hold a razor there are tons of them out there let me show you the owl here this was one of the first things that I spotted. I love, love, love this cow figurine. I didn't know it until afterwards, but her um, foot was broken off. But I still love her regardless. I don't know what she is or what she goes to, but I love the uh, the ruffled thing she has on her neck. And she it looks like she's trying to kiss somebody. This was really cool, also in the showcase. It says Autographic VPK, it's Kodak. If I open it up, actually, you know what, let me uh, turn this off and then I'll open it up so you guys can see. Okay, so this is what was inside of the box. We have a Vest Pocket Autographic Kodak Special Booklet. And I just opened it up to see what year it's from. This is from August of 1916, so that's pretty remarkable. And in the box was this photograph and it's of a woman, Velvet Velo. I assume that's probably how you pronounce that. It's probably not Velvet Velox. Velvet Velo. And it says, print showing the size and quality of negative made with the Vest Pocket Autographic Kodak Special and quality of print on Velo paper. Mounted with Kodak drying mount tissue, Eastman Kodak Company in Rochester, New York. I didn't realize this was that old. I thought this was probably from like the 20s or 30s, but wow, well over 100 years old and to be in the shape that it's in along with that box is quite remarkable. I wanna move this stuff over here. I'm sorry folks, it's not usually my normal editing process, but when there's a lot of stuff on here, it'll just take too long for me to clear up anything or clear off the table just to show you all everything. So I found this little girl here. She looks like she just came back from Hawaii. She's got a butt, so I apologize for that if anybody's offended. Um, no markings to say who she's made by. I think she'd be great in a summer sale. Very Hawaii, kawaii, luau. Very, very sweet. She's got her hair. Couldn't say no to that. And like I said, everything was 34 bucks, so I got a ton of stuff, including some things that were not vintage. So, you know... That just makes it even better. And what did I do with my black light? Oh, there you are. So I found this chicken, or hen, and it's a candy container. And what's funny is, I don't know if it's gonna show up on camera or not, but there is a hint of a glow in it. I don't know what it is, but I promise you it's there. It probably held candy, maybe like candy eggs at Easter time, I'm not sure, but that's my best guess. Like you throw some chocolate eggs in here or Maybe mints, because mints, like the hard mints that are almost like the chewy hard mints that you get at the candy store, probably would fit in here and make it look like there's a bunch of eggs in here. So I went ahead and picked that up. I don't think there are any markings on it, as far as I know. Nope. It is a little bit broken in the back, but I mean, it's still neat regardless. Again, sorry folks for my disorganized shuffling of items. So I found this amber vase here. I don't know the age of it. Anytime I see vases like this and in the shape, I think of 1960s, 1970s, like the bicentennial era. It's not pointy, pointy um, hobnails. It could be Fenton. It could be Pilgrim. It could be so many different companies because so many different glass manufacturers made stuff like this. I'm thinking this might do well in a fall sale or... You know, I could sell amber glass all year at my sales because I know there are boho lovers and they love having the amber glass for that style. So I went ahead and got that. Oops. Now this, I did look up. This is, I don't even know how old it is. I just went ahead and grabbed it because if you can see or if you'll be able to see, oh, it's right here. It says Lennox. And it's a, at first I thought they were bumblebees, but after I did some more research on it, this is called the butterfly meadow pattern. And it's got a, what I would classify as a bamboo handle. And I think I can probably get $15 for just this creamer. Uh, spring is here and people are looking to decorate for that time of year. So I think this will do pretty well. 
Another item that I will be putting at a live sale very soon is this really nice pink pottery vase here. Got a nice gold outline of a flower, and I believe these are embossed or raised. So that might be like seven, eight dollars at a sale. Nice shade of pink, very mid-century. I'm sure someone out there would absolutely love this. These are new old stock. Granted, the fact that the packaging is a little messed up. Uh, the Valley Railroad Company playing cards. I do, I can sell these cards for like five bucks at my sales. I don't, like I said, I like to keep the cost of my goods low if you guys are new to my channel. So that way I can pass on the savings to you all and you get some good stuff for not a lot of money. All right, and the last group of items, let me go ahead and edit this. All right, the last group of items for this part of the haul is this really awesome lot of, they're either candy molds or they're like molds to make like little like vinyl or rubber toys. They are marked 1969 Mattel Inc. They are for peanuts, you know, Charles Schultz's peanuts. Very, very popular, of course, among many people. And I did do some research on these and I think I'm gonna do pretty well with these. I'm not gonna sell them individually. I think selling them as a lot, they will do better. I don't know if I should clean them up a little bit or if I should just leave them as is and just let the new buyer take care of that. But there's uh, Linus, there's Snoopy, there's Lucy. I can't even name all the characters because peanuts were not really my thing growing up. But those were really cool, I, something I've never seen before. So I said, what the heck, let me grab those. And like I said, for what I paid for them, it's definitely worth that. So there's a ton of them here. I mean, you name it, it's pretty much in here. Snoopy, Linus, Lucy. See, I can't, like I said, I can't name all of the characters. But yeah, that was definitely a good pickup. So I thought there was going to be a little bit more than I anticipated because it's been so long since I bought this stuff and it turns out there's actually not much more. So this is a really cool tin. This has the, I guess it's the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria on the front of it. It's a biscuit tin. If we turn it around here, it says the Loose Wiles Biscuit Company, bakers of sunshine biscuits in Anderson, New York. Oh no, not Anderson, New York, I'm sorry. Address is New York, New York, made in the USA. It's got a really nice depiction again of the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. I almost left this behind. I, I looked at it and I was like, oh, okay. And then I turned it over and saw that it was a biscuit tin. I was like, okay, that's kind of cool. That would look really neat in coastal decor. Now there's a certain level of coastal that I like and this may not fit it, so I'm gonna look it up and see if it's got any value on eBay. If not, I'll put it in a live sale. So over here, these were a really good find. I, I think when I looked these up, these were from the 40s. These are Anco wiper blades. Uh, model CF, I can't remember if it says anywhere on the box, if they're made for a specific car. Oh, they're made by Anko Rainmaster, which we still have, I think, today in Gary, Indiana. Let me see if I can take them out of the box so you guys can see what they look like. So here's what they look like. Here is, and even has the original tag on it. Use only by Anko Deadlocker Arm. And the rubber is coming off of the blade a little bit, again, because these are so old. But to find them with the original tag on them is quite amazing. These I think I did look up and they do pretty darn well. So I will add these to my eBay shop at some point. So moving right along with tins, I thought this was really cool. This is an EF Kemp's Golden Crown, or no, Golden Glow, I'm sorry. Salted Mixed Nuts Tin. It is marked 1926. I love, love, love the graphics on here. They just don't make them like this anymore. No marks on the bottom, but that is a really cool piece. I might be saving that, because that how cool would that be for a Halloween display because of the orange? Fantastic. I'm probably gonna take a uh, Clorox wipe or something to get that sticker residue off, because I'm afraid if I use Goo Gone or Goof Off, it'll take the finish off, so we'll be careful with that. 
Now I did look this up, this little Traveler's LCD clock and band radio. I don't remember if there's a date on here. I don't think there is. It's probably from the 80s, I would say, and I did look it up. It doesn't do very well. I'm not sure if there's anybody interested in old technology like this, but we'll see. Maybe somebody might be interested in it for like 10 bucks at a live sale. Like I said, we'll see. Now this is newer. Um, when I say newer, I mean it's from 1998, so it's about 24 years old. Uh, it's got the Simpsons on it, and that's what made me pick it up. I might offer this TV guide up at a live sale. I'm sure somebody would love to have this displayed with all of their vintage Halloween. The cover is very fun. Even the ads inside here are very fun for the late, uh, for the late 90s. So I thought that was an interesting pickup. I mean, what do you all think? I mean, granted, I basically got it for nothing. And then there are just a couple more things that I'd like to share with you all, and that will be the end of this haul. So I looked through some of the hygiene and body care and cosmetics when I was in this one shop. This is a Revlon Fire and Ice Cool Perfume. As you can see, it appears to be, I would say maybe 40% full. It's not a completely full bottle. If you can find the full bottles, like the giant or bigger fluid ounce bottles, or maybe even the gift sets of this, you've got something good. Uh, this, I'm not sure how well I'll do with it. Maybe I can get eight, ten dollars for it. Again, but considering how little I paid for it, it's still going to be a profit. So Fire and Ice Cool by Revlon. And the last item I'd like to share with you all from this haul is this really nice green basket here. It's got a really nice image of grape patterns. Actually, it's pressed into the glass. It's grape leaves and grape vines. I found out that this was made by the Westmoreland Company. It is their Woolworth patterned glass basket. Handle is applied. It's even got a mold mark. There's no markings to say who made it, but again, after doing a Google lens search, that's what I found out that this is and who made this. I think it's probably from the 1930s, if I'm not mistaken. But that's not the cool part about this piece. Look at how beautifully this piece glows. I mean, that is a stunner right there. I, I looked at it. I didn't get a chance to see if it glowed in store. I just was like, oh, that looks interesting. Let me go ahead and pick it up. So I unpack it for the first time, and then I take my black light to it, thinking, oh, this is probably not going to glow. And it, it lit up like a Christmas tree. Holy moly, look at that. And folks, that is everything that I would like to share with you all today. I do apologize if I worried any of you being gone for about a week, even completely off of YouTube. I just needed some time to recover from being sick. And yeah. But I will be putting out more content soon. You might be seeing an influx of videos coming from me in the next week or so because I have... I just want to get caught up, and with me having a little picking weekend, I just want to get it all filmed, put up for sale, and ready to be sold at live sales. So I will see you all very soon. I will be having a live sale this coming weekend. It'll be my last one for the month of April, and then we will get back into a normal routine until the end of May. So that's all I have for you today. Be sure and give this video a big thumbs up. Leave a comment below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Be sure and click the bell next to the subscribe button if you'd like to get notified when new videos are uploaded. Be sure and check me out on Instagram. The link to it is down below as well, where you will see pictures of items to come in future haul videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all soon. Bye, guys.